Welcome back, everybody, to episode 26 of the Back Lounge Podcast. My name is Tank. I'm your host. And if you're new to the podcast, I'm a roadie with over 16 years of experience in the touring music industry. Today, I have a very, very special guest. I actually couldn't believe this kind of came together, but it's one of those super full circle moments because our guest today is going to be LeJean Witherspoon, the vocalist for the legendary Seven Dust. Now, I say this was a full circle moment because over my 16 years of touring in the industry, I've actually run into LeJean and the other guys from Seven Dust, like, I don't know, every couple of years, just randomly, whether my tour has a day off and we go see them at one of their shows while while they're also in town or one of them has been backstage at a show I've been working. It's crazy that I just constantly run into them. And you'll notice very quickly in this podcast, like LeJean and I kind of started reminiscing about running into each other and we're familiar with each other. And it made for a really cool conversation because for those of you that listen to this podcast regularly, regularly can't talk today. You know that I like to keep these very conversational. I don't like to come in with pre-written questions and asking the same thing that a lot of other media outlets do. And this, more so than a lot of other episodes, was one of those just sitting with a friend and talking, man. I mean, 80% of this podcast is probably stuff that doesn't even involve Seven Dust, to be 100% honest, man. We were talking about, you know, being dads and talking about our kids and how we balance that with going on the road. We were talking about, you know, touring during COVID and getting COVID and how we dealt with all that stuff. And then when we did talk about seven dust stuff, it was mostly, you know, kind of their entire history. Like throughout the years, they haven't really had a lot of member changes just for a couple of years. They had somebody leave and then somebody come back and they've had a stable lineup for almost 30 years. And that's pretty magical in the music industry. So I talked to him about how they keep that. And uh, we also talked about a lot of upcoming stuff as well, because for anybody that doesn't know, which I don't know how people don't know at this point, but Seven Dust 14th studio album is going to be coming out soon. It's called Truth Killer. It's going to release on July 28th, 2023 from Napalm Records. Now, pre-orders are already available for all that. I've already ordered mine because I like to, you know, pre-order and collect and help the band and stuff like that. But if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll throw links in the description of this video where you can go check stuff out. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple or anywhere else, 7dust.com. That is your main hub for everything 7dust related. They've got their tour dates. They've got their merch store, all their other social media links. Speaking of tour dates... I mean, these guys are busier than most bands. I mean, they've been touring all year. Starting August 1st, they're going to be doing the next leg of Alter Bridges Pawns and Kings Tour, which is going all over North America. And at the time of recording this podcast, it was not announced, but we did talk about this. They have recently announced a co-headlining tour called the Machine Killer Tour with Static X. And you better believe I am going to the date that's close to Nashville on that one, man, because Static X and Seven Dust both some of my favorite bands when I was growing up and getting into metal. So super stoked about that, man. But with all that information out of the way, I'm super stoked to be bringing you this episode. So let's kick it off. All right, let's kick off episode 26 of the Back Lounge podcast. Joining me today, very special guest, LeJean Witherspoon of Seven Dust. Welcome, dude. What's up, man? It's a pleasure to be here. What a, what a cool uh, experience already before we started recording just to chat with you and uh, hear the history of the stories and everything. It's good to see you, brother. I know, you too, man. It's it's so wild, like these full circle moments, like as we were just talking before we were recording, it's like, you know, I've been in the industry a while too. And it's like, we've crossed paths many times and it's, mm-hmm, yes. it's, ha- it's happened on other podcasts too, but, and I don't expect people to remember because sometimes when we're working, you just see somebody really quick, but like, um, with you guys, with Seven Dust in particular, it started for me back in like 2005, 2006. We used to get added, my band, when I was in a band, I haven't been in years, we used to get added as local support at shows in Chicago all the time. Yes, yes. Dude, we've opened for you guys as a local band. It, it was more specifically, there was a couple tours that came through where it was you guys and Nonpoint, and they would okay. put us on as the opener. Do and we then, ever play the Metro, the Metro together, anything like that? Metro and House of Blues were the two places. Yeah, that we've, yeah. there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. I love playing and growing up playing Chicago and still 
to this day, it has a very special place in my heart to go back to the House of Blues and walk up 60,000 stairs. To get up, <laughs> the House of to Stairs, to bro. Top. It's yeah. ridiculous. But yeah, what, yeah. what a great town and a, a great energy. Yeah, man, it's really cool to see you and to come back to, to, to remember those things that, that got us to where we're at now, you know? Yeah. And one of the wild things too, one of my favorite memories with you guys actually was, uh, I think it was like 2010. I think it was that, that hard drive tour that we were just talking about. Yeah. I had been working for red for a couple of years and yeah, dude, I have the, the actual laminate version of that on the wall. It's crazy. Like what's weird is I've not been in my bar for months and I cleaned up a little bit for this and I don't know where this came from, <laughs> but it's obviously important. Yes, it's so yeah. cool. And I, yeah, man, that's so weird. And today you said that. So it's it's the, it, the it's, things are aligning for us. Yeah. <laughs> so what, that that specific tour was wild because when I was with Red, that was the first tour ever that Head Brian from Corn was, yeah. was solo, and he was opening for Red, and we had a day off, and you guys happened to be in town, and me, the guys in Red, and and Head came out. And I just yeah. remember like the backstage atmosphere and, and head being around you guys and the band and stuff. It was like such a brotherly family thing that it's like, that is actually a night on tour. I'll never forget because it was such I'm, a fun camaraderie night. Like, yeah, I remember that. Wow. That's crazy. It was you know what, man? We try to make that energy every time we go out on the road. It's like at this t- point in time, I man, we're family, we have kids mm-hmm. and wives and you know what, man? And it's like, when we're out there, let's have a good time. And that, that, that bubble or whatever you want to call it, uh, that circle, that that's 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 the energy that you want to create and keep going down the road every day in a safe environment. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, that's the only thing that we have to make it back home safely. So uh, we try to make it the best. And when cats like you come out and show up, man, it just makes it even better. Uh, you know, I, a lot of times, and like you said, man, it's so funny that we're talking because you, you, you get it from a whole different perspective. Uh, being, I feel you're an artist and I don't like roadie, you're a part of the band. So yeah. I, I think it should be a different word than roadie, uh, an ambassador of the band or whatever. Anyway, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I enjoy that you understand the timing and the, the respect and the way to go about things on a different angle than just the straight and normal. Like, uh, tonight it's funny. I'll be going to see the bad omens, uh, the band with nice. my whole family. Because my daughter and my wife and son love the band. I think they're incredible too, but I didn't think I'd be taking my family to the concert tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So it's, oh yeah, I think it's so I'm thinking, I'm looking at I'm like, my daughter knows more of their songs than I do. I'm like, okay, this is cool, you know? So we'll have a good time. So I don't know why I got off track with that, but everything seems to be, it, it kind of leads back to all of it, you know? Yeah, to me, yeah. And it's, it, it's so wild too, because like, you know, you guys have the reputation as a lot of people in the industry and, and in general, know like you guys have that reputation of like legendary live performing band, but your, your first record came out in 1997. I mean, we're talking 25 years ago and with yeah, the, sure. with the exception of a small period in time you guys have had pretty much the same consistent lineup. So to go back to what you were saying about how it's a big family environment, how have you guys kept that for 25 years and stayed sane and, and, and just keep this all together? Yeah, too, man. You know, and like if I, if any advice I can give to bands and stuff out there as a 50 year old man, as as of last year, it's something that uh, you could have a group. Anybody can be an awesome group, a group of guys, a group of girls, group guys and girls or whatever, whatever gender you are, you know, whatever you may be called. Uh, you can be a group and you can be kick ass and be the best, but you're not a band. A band is different. A band is uh, mm. someone that's bled together, that's died and lived. And so it's, I, I feel like it's a different thing. It's uh, it's someone that been together, been through it like, oh, God, when, when we were bankrupt, when his mama died. His daddy died. My mm-hmm. brother died. You know, that's a band. You know, I was at that funeral. I was at that, you know, I was at that wedding. I was at that divorce. You know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So to me, music comes out differently when it comes in a setting of a group of people that have been through a journey for that long. You have to understand the passion and the pain that's coming from a brother that you've been with on a tour bus and he can't get back to his house because shit's fucked up mm-hmm. or do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah. we've seen it for years and years. So it makes it a different thing. I feel, uh, I just feel like, you know, th- th- there's bands and there's groups and I'm glad that I'm in a band. 
Yeah, that's a great way of putting it, man. And, you know, a lot of that comes with like the early days too. like a lot of people always ask me questions about like, you know, how it's like touring in a bus and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, bus touring is great. It's it, mm -hmm. it's more comfortable than a lot of other situations. But the truth is, is when I was in a band and it was just the five of us in a van and trailer together. Those are the times where you really bond and really go oh. through the shit together, man. And it's like, I feel like anybody that tours should have to do a year in a van and trailer required. Oh my God, we did, we did, we did more than a year. Oh, oh yeah. my God, I remember waking up in cold baloney water from the cooler <laughs> Lincoln. Are you kidding me? So listen, we did maybe like two, two and a half years in a van, and then we moved up to an RV. And this is a true story for everyone out there. I remember the RV pulling up to our hotel room. And of course, we only had one room. We were all in the hotel room. Yep. And guess who brought... Guess who drove us the RV? This is a great story. Troy, the uh, guitar player that's now in Evanescence. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just, he, and him, him with some family members, drove up uh, to bring us the RV to our destination, and they were going to take the van back for us or whatever. And that night, we did not stay in the hotel. We stayed in that little 1-800 RV rental thing. <laughs> yeah. We thought we had made it, man. We were like, this is it. Yes. We <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I know that feeling like, so going from a band in a van and trailer, uh -huh. my next tour I did, or my first tour working for a band, not being a musician uh -huh. anymore was actually with red. And at the time they didn't have a, a full bus yet. They had that like conversion, almost like bandwagon looking thing yeah. that they converted. I remember right, get, right. getting on that and was like, this is the greatest thing this, ever. This, this, it's this. not a van. <laughs> yes, I remember those. I remember the first tour bus we got. Uh, it used to belong to Janet Jackson. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but I remember it had this fake chandelier in the back <laughs> that didn't move, but it was a chandelier. Oh, it was so cool. But man, those were the days. It was an old eagle. We, oh, oh man, this, those days were so, you know, it was, it's just, it was different times. We were so innocent. Mm -hmm. and young and carefree we didn't have kids and wives and uh i think the, the whole scene was just different too it was more i don't know i hope it gets back to that one day uh, i think i think now with everything opening up it's a new chance for us to begin something new uh these concerts have been incredible that we've been able to be a part of the festivals and this last run and i look forward to the new altar bridge run and then the tours in the future are going to be incredible so it's exciting yeah i actually i <sighs> I think something was going on with my daughter. I have a two-year-old daughter. Oh, hey, and, congratulations. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's, yeah, that was a pandemic thing and it's been wild. Uh, yeah. Some um, different babies right there. Those are some strong <laughs> kids. Dude, no joke. So many people that I had toured with uh, for the, like the previous like six, seven years before the pandemic mm -hmm. happened, we all had kids at the same time. And not only that, but when we were home, when my wife went into labor and we went to the hospital, the guitar player that I had been teching for for six years uh -huh. He and his wife were in the room across from us in the hospital having their no, kid at the same time. No way. <laughs> yeah, what? it was wild. Those kids should be buddies right there, man. I, I know, right? Yeah, it's 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 wild, man. And it's like, that, you know, it's it's life changing, as I'm sure you're aware, you know, like. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's uh, it's crazy. What's it been like for you? Everything good? So <clears throat> the one thing I had to adjust to, to, to be honest, like. I was, I was, and probably still am a very selfish person in the sense of I've always been used to being able to do what I want when I want to mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, Dude, absolutely. The second you have a kid, it's like, that's gone. Like oh, you, man. You, you have to be there for your child. And you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating. It's exhausting, but it's the most magical, awesome, special it thing is. ever. Oh, oh, just wait, just wait. Uh, my six year, well, six year old and my 15 year old they're into every single thing the, uh, right after i got off tour uh we presented my daughter with a car because they, we had it in the car condo for two weeks and we wanted to give it to her for 15th birthday did that we did that but then right after that at seven o'clock i was at my son's birthday party in my outside rocking chair about to pass out <laughs> thinking about the show from last time i'm like this is crazy but you got like you said you gotta do it mm -hmm. and it's amazing man and and to see those kids faces when you're able to be there for them and it's a very, it's a special thing because you know what? I'm looking at these kids right now and they're growing up so fast. And before you know it, they're going to be, you know, not thinking daddy's too cool to hang out yeah. with them more. So uh, 
I, I, I say enjoy this time, man. And, and, and you know, I just, it's just incredible, man, just because that little person looks up to you and it's, it's, it's pretty beautiful, man. I, I love being a father and I love waking up and being here around these kids at the time that I have. Yeah. Uh, right now, just it, it's so important to be able to see them grow. And that pandemic, the only the only positive thing about it for me in my life was that I was able to be at some of the things that I was not able to be at, yeah. like the daddy daughter dance. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You know, just things that my my one of my our, our, our family doctor, Doc Brian, took my daughter to two of her daddy daughter dances. You know, it's like daddy has to work. And they understood yeah. that. But that helped me be able to get closer with them. And I, I think a lot of people were able to do that with their families, which is something that was very important. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, my wife has always been awesome with my touring schedule. She understands like yes, absolutely. Er early on when we were dating and our relationship started getting seriously, I was on a tour where the artist I was working for was like, has she ever come out on the road? Does she actually know what's going on? And I was like, no. And they're like, bring her out. So yeah. they, they, they let me bring my wife out so she could see like what's actually happening and what we're doing. And so she's always gotten it. But the, the reality was when we, when we got sent home during the pandemic, this last few years is the most time I've spent with my wife can like in 10 years. Well, me too. My wife's like, get back out there to go work. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's like, yeah. Get out of here. I'm like FaceTiming. They're like, what do you want? You just left. I'm like, well, I miss y'all. <laughs> yeah. But no, the kid thing is great. I, like she's getting to yeah. the point where she's talking now. And like, it just makes my day. Like I wake up in the morning and the first time she sees me, just big smile. Daddy. Yeah. I'm like, oh, there you man. go. Like, it man, just that's, that's, hey, that spoil her rot, man. That yeah. is, that's, that's the, that's your princess. That's beautiful, man. I love hearing that, brother. Yeah, we're, we're taking her to go see uh, Bluey live on Saturday. So oh, <laughs> That's gonna be fun for you too, man. Yeah. Oh, that's I love gonna, it. Hey, yeah, that's that's yeah. great. Yeah. If you, you know you do anything, do you a shot or something before you go in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, dude. I, I I think that Bluey. I mean, I'll watch it by myself. I think it's great. There's oh, some... Bluey's great. What well, we have some friends from Australia that uh, had something to do with that, so it's it's really cool. Oh, uh, that's awesome. He, yeah, Kingston. Now he doesn't watch Bluey too much. Uh, he's more into the I don't know the YouTube family shows. So yeah. it's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but we, we watch... know Bluey. Yeah, we watch a lot of those too on YouTube, like the Tab Time and you know Miss Rachel and all that stuff. But yeah, oh my goodness, yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but so so you're you you brought up tour a minute ago, and I what I was gonna get to is something was going on with my daughter. I was gonna go to the Nashville show uh, that you were just that you had, and I just couldn't make it. But you guys just wrapped up that first big leg of uh, you know that tour with Alter Bridge and, and Mammoth mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I know there's you just finished more dates and there's more dates coming up and you guys are like super, super busy. Um, how's it, how's it been for you guys? Like, like post pandemic quarantining, just getting back out on the road and going, are you just ha having a blast again? Yes. Yeah, cool, man. You know, for us, we were, able, we were able to, uh, during that pandemic, utilize a situation where we had a, a, a spot where we were able to go in to do a live setting, like a live, a concert mm -hmm. and people were able to buy it. And we did that like three times, I believe, uh, during the pandemic where everyone had to be tested. There was only a small crew. I think two of our crew guys, uh, three film, you know, director and two film film guys and everything. And us jamming live to however many people bought, which were, was great. The family came in for us on that just because they wanted to have some type of normalcy. And that's what we yeah. wanted to do. And it was really funny to like jam out like jam the cameras are going everywhere and nobody's in there but like you know eddie our drum tech and and our guitar tech doing like this right here and we rock out and afterwards you hear like <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i'm like all right listen if it's only be two of you guys clapping don't do it ever again <laughs> yeah we did we did a few of those too and and we actually even had one where uh you know, we sound checked during the day. We had a break, right. and, and when we came back, they they were doing the you know the rapid testing on everybody, and our guitar player got a false positive test, and they had to send him home. So no like, way! So like last minute, they had to call in a sub that it was just like you know you, these country players in Nashville. You just tell them what key the song's in, and they know yeah, how to play yeah. it. It's crazy. No way! That's yeah. crazy. They sent him home that quick. Yeah, I guess we would have to do that too. I don't know. I, you know what? If anybody blink weird, I was getting ready to say, listen. To get him out of here yeah he blinked he he just blinked and farted twice i don't like it <laughs> yeah yeah, like yeah. It. Check, him, check him out you know was, what I mean? dude, it was such a weird time looking back on that initial like first part of 2020 when we were still trying to do virtual gigs and doing stuff it was like 
looking back on that even now, but even more so in the future, it's going to just be wild because it's like, think about all the stuff that like everybody's wearing masks. Everybody's getting their temperature yeah. checked every hour. Like it was, it was wild. It was crowd. I, I think about this. Remember, I remember I go to Lifetime still. It's my gym. It's my family gym. But I want to ask him next time I go, I'm like, where are those damn machines at that y'all made us put our faces in <laughs> yeah. when we were coming to the gym? Where are those things at? Where, yeah. You know what I mean? Can I buy one? Because I know there's somewhere in a closet around here. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I, I avoided COVID for about three years. And then on my oh. first tour back in February, March of this mm -hmm. year, I came home and uh, I took a test just because I'm, right. you know, my wife and my kid, and it came up positive. So I was like, "That's it's interesting." Real. I didn't, yeah. I didn't feel anything. So I took another test and it came up positive, and I was like, "Oh wow, I actually got COVID." And I had no symptoms whatsoever. And I remember calling my tour manager, and this all everybody on this crew was all European except for me, so they were back home already. Huh. And I was like, "Hey, I just want to let you know, like, I just tested positive for COVID," and he's like. Whatever, dude. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> it's like, right, right, right. All right, cool. What I tell you what, man. I I got it uh, on a tour, and I didn't think that I had it, and I still got home. Well, the tour ended, and the family picked me up, and we had this beautiful suite, and I still was like, I'm not gonna sleep with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sleep in the living room just because we just got out of a tour. I did the just same. in case. Yeah. No big deal. And when I get home, I'm going to go take the rapid test or whatever. Immediately get home, go to the rapid test place, go in line. And the lady's like, oh, this is only a three day. You have to, this is a three day thing. I was like, my wife told me this is rapid test. She's like, no, this is a three day thing. And I was like, well, I need, I just got off the tour. I need to really get tested. She's like, well, there's an emergency place right uh, down the road from your house. And I was like, okay, I'll go there, man. I'll tell you what I went there. Uh, I didn't feel sick at all. That night, I still, when we got back to the house, I slept down in the man cave. And at three o'clock in the morning, my phone said, ding. And for whatever reason, I looked at it and said, positive. <laughs> About two seconds later, I heard, doo -doo 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 -doo. and it was my wife running down saying, you got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know, I'm sorry. She's like, uh, you got it. I'm like, oh, oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> Dude, this, I mean, it was similar. It's like when I, when I got it, I was just like, I, I don't know what we're going to do here. Like right. I'll just go sleep in the guest room for a right. week yeah. and hopefully, you, and, and they didn't get it. I'm, I'm, I, yeah. they somehow didn't get it, but it, um, it happened. The wife got it. Uh, it got real weird for a second. The daughter got it, but then they were in school. i tell you one time I knew I had it. Let me tell you this. I was like, I'm fine. It's a little weird. I don't feel like myself. And I sneezed. And this was at the very beginning. And it felt like a zillion needles oh, damn. came through the nostril hairs of my nose. And I was like, oh, that's something weird. Yeah. <laughs> I the, the I thing, never felt that before. The thing that's so crazy about it is like, so for me, I had no actual physical symptoms. I did feel a little tired like that. Yeah, that was noticeable. Right. But I've had friends that I toured with that got it. Like I have a friend, a drum tech friend of mine that got it that didn't have severe symptoms, but he said that his smell and taste still like two years later are like non-existent. I'm like, so he's got, Oh, he still has his lingering the long term. Yeah. Wow. So after I came home and I had it for like two days or whatever, of course my wife comes downstairs after I'm feeling good. She's like, I can't taste anything or smell anything. I'm oh, like, Oh no. no. <laughs> and that went, Oh yes, exactly. And that went on. For a long time and thank the lord that everything's fine now but yeah i, I was like oh no and she's like yeah i can't taste any i was like here try this mustard this is <laughs> yeah yeah she's like no it's only making me sweat <laughs> yeah dude it, and it's so wild too because like when you do have that positive result you have a weird it, it made me feel weird in the sense that like you're very aware you're like dang i could give this to somebody else now it makes you very aware yeah. of the seriousness. Or maybe you always thought it was serious, but until that moment. Yeah. Hold on, I'm sorry. You don't <laughs> accept holding it. No, you're good. Money's freaking. Yeah, you know, until that moment, you don't realize that, wow, that that's a serious thing. And then besides that point, you know, I had to, I have kids and I have a wife that has a uh, you know, she has a uh, immune deficiency, so she's a uh, very it's acceptable to things. So we have to be very careful with that kind of stuff around her uh, thyroid. So, yeah. But, yeah, so it was, it was crazy. But we made it through it. Good God, man. Uh, 
what a time to be around now and still touring and stuff and and, and not being as worried but let me tell you still having mm-hmm. a conscious you know what i mean like yeah man that dude's like hey man i love you, I love you. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 uh, I'm like, man, I love you too, but dang, man, wait a second, bro. I mean, I mean, I know we don't have to wear a mask or anything, but your nose is you're running. <laughs> yeah. I become more aware of that since I've been a parent. Like yeah, exactly. when, when we're around other people and other kids, like if I see like another kid with a runny nose or something, I'm like, no, because my daughter's gonna get that. <laughs> like, oh, that is so funny you say that as a dad. That's one kid that we know that I call him snotty nose. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nah. I'm like, any. I'm like, is, did you guys see him? They're like, yeah. I was like, was his nose running? And my son tells the truth. He's like, yes, yeah, his nose is running down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, dude. <laughs> I was like, it's never not. But he's that kid. <laughs> dude, that's. I mean, it, the things you start noticing when you become a parent, it's just it's that, crazy. It's like, always it's, that kid. And guess what? There's other. There's bad kids. Uh, there's a kid in the neighborhood that we call FD. <laughs> You wonder why? <laughs> What's that? Because uh, one day she was outside in the yard. Go upstairs, please. <laughs> go, what's, what do you need? Go. I'm in my bar. Go. Go get what you need. It's funny. He came down here right when I was talking about FD. Our name. So listen, <laughs> uh, we call her FD because my wife was outside and the water sprinklers went off in our neighbor's yard. And the daughter said, fucking damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Age. She's oh. the same age. She's the same age as my son. He looked at mom, and the wife said, "Where'd you learn that from?" She's like, "Dad, dude, I am not." No, we proud. Call, we call ahead. her FD, dude. <laughs> they don't know it. I am not proud of this. I had my first moment last night, like uh, twelve hours ago, where I realized, like, you know, I I have a pretty bad vocabulary, and I'm aware of it because we have a kid. And last night. Uh, I was trying to get her to bed and like her, her juice bottle wasn't working. There was like an air bubble in it. And I was like, it's like, fucking damn it. Like under my breath, not even loud. And my daughter just goes, fuck it. Fuck it. And I'm like, no, no. She's a little FD. Yeah. And then then she starts going, damn it. And I'm like, oh, my my wife, I came out. I told my wife, I was like, all right. She's young enough that she's going to forget it really quick. But I'm like, I really need to watch myself now. You might come up. Yeah. Cause uh, FD, her nickname has stayed for like now two years. So (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, oh, my wife kind of volunteers at the school and she's like, FD got in trouble. And now it's to the point to where the other teachers and principals know that that's FD. Like, yeah. (laughs) FD choked somebody out yesterday. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it, it's funny, though, because, like, I don't want to judge other people and their kids. Yeah, but like you're, like you're saying, you're you're aware of the reputation of the other kids, like, in the neighborhood and stuff. Oh, like, absolutely. You, you're yeah. aware. You, like, I read a book. Like, what was it? Well, I forget. It was a long time ago. Uh, it's too late. Your kid's an asshole. It's, be- <laughs> it's because you out. are. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, for real. Like that's, I mean, you know, kids learn from their parents and stuff like that. There you but, go, absolutely. Yeah. So you see, it, you know. <laughs> and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to teach her the right way. Like we're, yeah. My my wife and I are very, we're like we're friends with a lot of different people and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what absolutely. I like. So I I I think you were going to ask it earlier when I said it, but I kept talking because I talk a lot. But um, like I live in, I've lived in Nashville for like twelve years. That is so weird. I've been, you know, it's Kingston Witherspoon upstairs, please, sir. <laughs> What are you doing? I, I love this. Hurry up, dude. Because I hear him playing down here. Yeah. Uh, he's got a whole upstairs. So, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, I was born and raised. Yep. My grandfather's Frank Witherspoon. He was the first black man to desegregate Tennessee walking horse shows. He's in the Tennessee Walking Horse Hall of Fame there in Shelbyville. Damn. Uh, we still do the celebration every year in Shelbyville, Tennessee. We have the Witherspoon stables still there. Uh, and several of my family still show horses. That's something that I would like to get back into now that I'm an older uh, uh, senior citizen, almost man. <laughs> I have I have the time to uh, take time to ride horses now. But uh, that's something I would like to get back into. But lately, I've been going to Nashville working with my solo stuff, not to get off Seven Dust, but I've been yeah. working uh, with uh, some cats from Jelly Rose team, man. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Andrew Whitfield. uh and I also work with the cats uh, for the Four Horsemen group out there in Nashville. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I've been coming back and forth. Actually, I'll be in Nashville in another month to finish up some solo stuff, man. Damn. But you live in a beautiful place, man. Uh, my wife and 90 of my closest friends from around the world tricked me last year 
and we had a surprise birthday party that I didn't know about in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, October 3rd. That, wait, the, is, uh, is your birthday October 3rd? Yeah. That's my dad's birthday. <laughs> no way. Your yeah. dad's a cool Libra, man. Yeah. Yeah. Up? yeah. That's, that's wild. Happy birthday to your father, man. He's a, he's a magic dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, it, so I, I originally moved to Nashville, uh, honestly, cause I was working for red. And when I, first, like we talked yeah. about that, but when I, when I first started working for them, I was still living in Chicago and mm -hmm. every weekend I was driving down to do the weekend warrior stuff and then driving back up. And I was finally got tired of it. And I was like, I'm going to move here. And at one point I was going to move back to Chicago, but then I met my now wife and we stayed here, but we actually just moved. Uh, we lived in Nashville, like in the city limits for the longest time. That's crazy. And man. My, I grew up. my, my problem with the neighborhood we lived in, this, mm -hmm. And it really hit me when we had our daughter. Our neighborhood that we lived in, we were the youngest couple by far. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really old and, I believe re it. and really white. <laughs> like, oh, wow, really? Where where'd you live at in Nashville? We're, we're in Donaldson. Okay, I know Donaldson. Yeah. Man, uh, uh, my grandfather, well, my auntie's finally going to sell the house. But behind East High School, yeah, right yeah. there, uh, that only the only old house that's still there, the white and red one. That's my grandfather's house. No way. Uh, he, he left it to my family. My aunt still has it. She's about to sell it now, finally. Uh, Wise Liquor Store. Uh, my grandfather used to run a, a dry cleaners right down the street from Wise Liquor Store. And I remember all my uncles and aunts, if they could never get their check cash, they would go to Mr. Wise because he grew up with my granddad. And they were friends. And he was like, I know who your, yeah, who your yeah. granddad is. So, man, for me to go back to Nashville now, Sometimes I cry. I used to live in Silverdine Apartments, which used to be right across the street from Meg's uh, high school. Now it's a magnet school Yeah. Uh, that used to be right there by the projects. So I lived in Silverdine Apartments, which weren't the projects, but the projects were right there. So <laughs> Yeah. We're, how, how long? Did, when did you leave? How old were you when you left Nashville? To I left Nashville when I was 12 years old. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I, I have so many, so many. My first concert was at the Municipal Auditorium. All right. Excuse me. I was able to walk across the bridge. Still to this day, it's very scary. Not Maybe when I was little. And I got to see New Edition, I'll be sure, uh, at the Municipal Auditorium uh, no when way. I was the coast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually, yeah. I was actually just over there. I saw the... Uh, the Papa Roach Falling in Reverse tour there. Oh no way! Yeah, no, it's still open, man. That's great, man. We can we can talk about that forever. I'm sorry I, to get off. No, of that. dude, dude, we've been off Seven Dust for like 20 minutes. It's all good. I, like <laughs> I grew I grew up in Nashville, and when I go back there, it's so freaking weird, man. Sometimes I'll go down the street and start crying, like because it's like oh, I bet it's so different now. I guess yeah, so it's different. Crazy. I grew up. My little brother was killed on Eighth Street there. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, man. yeah, I know. So it's just like it's a lot of uh, oh wow, it's a I sometimes I go down the street and I'm like, oh my God, to my wife will drive. I'm like that church right there beside all these new condos. I've been in that church or that old lady that's not going to sell her house. I know her. I remember her because yeah. she was friends yeah. with my grand. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so weird to see the different, the so, young people, the old people, the people are not budging, you know, it's like. Dude, it's, it, Nashville has changed so much since I've been here for like 12 years. Mm -hmm. And, Recently, my wife and I, going back to what I was saying about our old neighborhood being like super old right. and super white, we right. wanted our daughter to grow up in a diverse neighborhood. So we actually sold our place. And right now we actually live in Clarksville up by the military okay. base. Oh, wow. And, and this neighborhood is so diverse and it's, mm -hmm. there's people Everybody. from all over the place. Like, uh, you know, people that join the military and move here. Like and they we, come from everywhere. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's great because everybody has kids and it's good for her to grow up. But one of the yes. most wild places I lived in Nashville with my wife before we bought our house, we lived up by Tennessee state university uh, at, yes, yeah. at, at Jefferson and Rosa parks and yeah. predominantly old school black neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was the most, it was kind of the most perspective I've ever had of living in Nashville because we talked to all of our neighbors there and it's like, yeah, that's one of the more old school neighborhoods that hasn't sold their properties or anything yet. And like, absolutely, you, know, you could walk down the street to, you know, we'd go down the street to nothing, nothing but wings, dude, the fucking yeah, best chicken that, place. I got like, chill bumps right now. That's that reminds <laughs> me of growing up in my auntie, keeping that nostalgia and not selling my granddad's house because of that reason mm -hmm. of that, that legacy of that oldness. Uh, that's so crazy. You say that, man, I went back to my mom, Eliza's house. That's in East Nashville. That's, 
my granddad's house was here behind East High School. And then Mama Liza's house is right up the hill that I grew up at, which was right beside the church. And I went back and her house was for sale. This has been years after she died. And we looked it up and that house seems so small now. And it was $400,000, something like that. That little bitty, I mean, it was like, I was like, it's, you know, even though we grew up in this, I said, I, I I can't spend it on that right now. You know, yeah, it's the cost is so crazy how much they've jacked everything up there. It's but insane, it's beautiful. Dude. It's, it's insane. still beautiful, though. I yeah. love Nashville, man. I love the energy there. I can't wait to get back. I'm very happy that you're there with your family, man. Yeah, it's great here. We love it. Like I it, like we we when we were about to move, we looked at places all over the country. And mm -hmm. it just, it came down to, it was just like, we like the area. We like the people. Plus for the music industry, I'm close enough still even being in Clarksville that if I need to get yeah. some words, it's no problem. And, but, um, but dude, okay. I'm sorry. We have to get up when I get Yeah, we need it. We'll <laughs> no, talk. dude, yeah, I could do this for the people that That's listen all? to this podcast know me too. I could go on a tangent about random stuff forever, but That's you know, so, so you tie it into this story. So you leave Nashville Yes. You relocate to Georgia and eventually you join what became seven dust. Yes. And so we're, we, we talked the first album came out in 1997 and you guys have been <laughs> so consistent over the years. One of the more consistent bands in terms of releases and sound and stuff like that. Um, the album that's about to come out, it's coming out on July 28th. Uh, for those yes. of you listening, it's called truth killer 14th studio album. Um, and the crazy thing to me is when I listened to fence, when it came out as a single, <laughs> dude, it gave me the same feelings of when I was listening to like, like, like home and animosity and stuff. That's what like, we did. That's that reason. That's the reason we did that. And that song almost didn't make the album because that we, we can't be afraid of that original sound. Mm -hmm. That was us. That's us. It's still in us. And it was so fun to do that song and to record it and then to put it out there and be like, you know what? That's even though we're doing different things we've evolved and grown up and done different things that yeah. i mean i come on get out of here that's that it's rocking you yeah. can't deny it it's fun I, I love writing songs like that i can't wait to do even more stuff like to tap into that old school sound of us but uh it, it's exciting the video was incredible when it came out yeah and something and something funny about what's going on on this Alter Bridge tour, our light guys, Alter Bridge light guy, he's incredible. He, uh, he does uh, Mudvayne and several other big bands. But uh, he has mimicked the light show to the Fence video. So it looks just like no the way. light show. And it's crazy. So I find myself on stage looking back and like kind of mimicking them. Because <laughs> yeah. he, he's doing all, I mean, the, the strobes are green. The, the bright, I mean, it's so funny. We're up on stage laughing at each other. He's like... It's the video. <laughs> That's crazy. That's wild. Yes. And I mean, yeah. and again, like you guys, um, you know, it, it, I find bands to be in a hard position though, sometimes with new stuff, because like you do something new and then mm -hmm. the fan base is like, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's new. But then you do something that sounds like your old stuff and they're like, oh, they're just, they're not evolving. Like, it's like you can't win no matter what you put out sometimes. So so what we've done is we said fuck all that. Yeah, we're too old to we're too old to worry about that. We have enough heavy songs where we know we're a heavy band. We can bring it like that. But we've evolved. We have kids. Things change. Mm -hmm. uh, seasons change. Man, music changes. Uh, why why stay the same when you you have this beautiful canvas that you can create and go down different streets and avenues and you know it's always come back to your hardcore fans. But it's amazing to be able to have the outlet to do music and do it the way you want to do it and feel proud of it and not feel like, ah oh, man, uh, someone's not going to like it. I don't give a shit. You know, it's like at this point, man, like it's music. It's what heals. It's what we all need. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Like my kids like Taylor Swift. I think she's cool and everything, but I'm not like rocking her songs in the car. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm, you know, it's like, if you don't like it, you know, I, it, like, I've always come from the school. If you don't have anything good to say, just don't say anything about it, you know, and so yeah. always be like, it sucks, man. It don't sound like the first, <laughs> it don't sound like the first album. Well, you don't look like you're fucking 17 years old anymore, <laughs> yeah, you douchebag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, man. With this YouTube channel and on my streams and my podcast, I always try and, 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 and drive home the point that music is such a subjective thing because people can attach their emotions and their feelings. Yeah. It's like the, I have some of those with some of the older seven dust albums. Like, you know, I can still listen to animosity like now 
and remember where I was when I oh was a yeah. late teenager because there are a lot of albums like that. But yeah. a good a good a good kind of example of this is um you know recently um Sleep Token put out a new album and that that band has so much hype around them and they're blowing we up. Love the band Sleep Token, dude. Yeah. And and I their record label allowed me to do a full album listen through on my Twitch stream recently. Oh, wow, and, very cool. Yeah, and I was I was I I I went into it with a super open mind. And I heard so many people and saw people in the chat that are like, this is the album of the year. I love what they're doing. Dude, it's great. There were some moments on that album for me where I was just like, mm, I'm not feeling this part as much, whatever. Mm-hmm. So at the end of that, when I was talking about like the review, I was like, you know, the most important thing to remember here, though, is music is so subjective that I will tell you right now, while I don't think this would be my album of the year, if mm-hmm. anybody out there feels that it's theirs, that's amazing because I know that feeling of listening to an album that I emotionally connect to and it makes me feel all these things. So Mm -hmm. if this is your album of the year, that makes me excited and happy because I know that feeling. And, you know, I was trying to drive home that point of, listen, we're not all going to like the same things for the same reason. Like, yes, absolutely. It's so cool to hear you talk about a band like Sleep Token. It's another band that my 15 year old daughter knows, even though I know, I feel like I know Sleep Token. I know the label and everything. I've not fortunately been able to meet the guys in the band. There's a couple of guys in my band have met them. But uh, my daughter is so into that too. I'm like, wow, how do you know more about them than I do? Uh, but that's what's <laughs> cool that this generation, our, gener- our next generation of these kids are listening to stuff that, that we like, like Gojira. Like my family doctor turned my family on to Gojira. I'm like, how do you know about Gojira, dog, Brian? <laughs> He's like, oh, I was I went to a show. He had a my family doctor had a Gojira shirt on a couple of years ago. I'm like, what the hell's going on around here? <laughs> I <Yeah>. love this band. <laughs> yeah, dude, I feel like metal right now uh, in like like harder music is is uh is kind of getting up to the forefront where it was about 20 years ago again. Like I said that the other day. I yeah. said yes, making a comeback. Yeah, like new metal especially is starting to get big again. Like, mm. and I think a lot of it too is because, you know the people that were in their like late teens and early twenties, 20 years ago are old enough now where it's like, you know, we got some money. We can go to shows and spend money on stuff. And it's like, all these bands are making a comeback. The other night I watched, I watched a full live performance of Limp Bizkit at Wembley arena on YouTube. And I was like, this is insane. This looks like how it did 20 years ago. Yes. I'm sure Wes was doing something crazy cool with his makeup. and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I love it, man. I, I hope to see those guys again. That's funny. We, we got some crazy stuff coming up in the future too, that I can't believe that we'll be a part of. So, so, okay. Good point. This, you probably don't even know that we can do this. Yeah. But, I got told. Okay. I, so I, I read my notes. I read my notes. I okay. Mean, cool. I know man, you're one of the, excited. you're, one of the, f- about this. you're one of the few. So I want to talk about this because as of right now, <laughs> filming this podcast it has not been announced but the time that the podcast comes out it will be announced but i'm dying to know he told me you guys are going to have a a big tour announcement so i want to hear it what's what are you doing well i what did he tell you because i like for you to say it because i like to hear it because it's still funny to me that i i'm it's not funny it's exciting but the funny part is the cat that made this happen has been a friend of mine since day one and i love him so okay. very much i'm so, so proud so of what he's all, that so all awesome. i was told to all i was told was that you guys are going to be doing something with static x in the future yes okay. absolutely it's going to be a big tour with seven dude. dust and static x and it's going to be so fun <laughs> dude that brings I, I i dude that is one that i will i will drive if i have to like if it yeah, doesn't come what? to nashville i will drive if i have to don't buy any tickets and if you want to come to several shows you come because it's going to be a banger man let me tell you oh. there's some stuff going on with that that i can't even talk about that's going to be very exciting i know that everyone when they do find out about it, it's going to be really cool and rest his soul wayne but yeah. to continue his legacy and i think what they're doing is incredible and uh i'm Dude, very excited about this run i will say right now well, I will fully admit when I saw, cause Static X, both of you guys, Static X and Seven Dust are two of probably the most important bands to me as a teenager. Oh, oh wow. We toured back in the day together several yeah, times. It was like, great to do it. Yeah. Dude, but I will admit when I first saw the announcement of them doing Static X reunion tour and all that stuff, I was like, man. Uh, what's going to happen? I was <laughs> like, come on. But then 
I've, I've, I've heard the reviews from friends that have seen it. I've watched the videos online and I got it. It's crazy. They're doing a fantastic job for Wayne's legacy. And I think it's, a, yeah. it's really cool. It's definitely something that I think everyone needs to see and hear and just be a witness to, because from what I've seen, I've not seen, I've not had the time to see it live, but I've seen the YouTube. I've had videos sent to me and mm -hmm. this is what you're going to be. You know, it's like, I can't wait to get on the tour. And, to be able to watch them do what they're doing right now. And, you know, and it, it's cool. It's very cool. I'm very proud of what they're doing. Yeah. It's, it, it's super cool. And like, I had some friends that were actually, um, friend of mine was doing lighting on that tour. So I was watching oh, like, uh, even, even their setup, dude, like they went all out. They're rocking video sick. and tons of lighting and like, it's huge. Yeah. It's, we're, doing, it's, we're using, we're doing, we're doing all the video and everything on this run. We were told, so I'm excited about that. It's going to be huge. Yeah. I said, we're going to bring it in. We're bringing in the heat. <laughs> and that's, and that's super impressive too, because nowadays, like I've done a few YouTube videos on this because people don't fully understand, like the mm. cost of touring for bands right now is more expensive than it's ever been in the history of music. Like it's yeah, because it, everything sat around for so long. They're like, yeah, yep. we're going to use it, but it's going to cost you. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that there are bands like, you know, that are bringing out that kind of stuff, it's like that shows you right there that they genuinely care about the production and the, the product that they're delivering to fans because that stuff ain't cheap right now, man. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You're not seeing that a lot unless you're going to these, these, you know, legacy shows that, you know, you yeah. probably, a lot of us can't afford to, you know, even get the damn tickets to or, but yeah, so it's going to be fun to, to take this tour around and I feel like it's going to last longer than they're saying it. So. Yeah, that'd be I awesome. That. I, I, I hope like Nash Nashville right now is getting skipped a lot with tours and I understand why it's the market here is not that great. I mean, people, right. there's so much music here that when I go to shows too, like even when I was working in country, we would do massive shows all over. And then when that tour got here, it would be like, you know, nobody. The, it, the fans are flat. The ticket sales are half what they would be. Oh, anywhere yeah. else. Like, it's, it's everything is everything is there. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like going to Vegas and seeing everybody all in, you know, once it's like a Nash Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like some of my favorite shows I go to in town or at, at like the club stuff. Like uh, recently that, I went and saw, I saw orbit culture and Vail Amaya, at like a 250 cap club a couple weeks ago. There you ago. go. Yeah. The small places. Dude, absolutely, man. Like Lorna Shore came through the new Brooklyn bowl. I know. So oh, I, like slaughter. When I get to Nashville, I'm checking too. out the Brook. Dude, yeah, I'm checking out the Brooklyn Bowl. I'm sorry. It, no, it's it's a sick venue. Like mm -hmm. it, it's it's a really, in my opinion, it's probably the best club venue we have in town at this point. Oh wow, um, very cool. Yeah, and then you got Marathon Music Works too, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, yeah, there's I saw a dude. I saw it like Sabaton at the Ryman a few months ago of all places, oh, wow. which That's is wild. Crazy, like. Yeah. We're getting some interesting stuff here and there, but for the most part, the majority of tours are are are, are skipping here, which is kind of a bummer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I've had to drive to Knoxville and Memphis and stuff to to see other shows. Right. Um, we recently played Chattanooga. Yeah. With the Alter Bridge. Yeah. We flew in from the Sick of It All uh, tour in Vegas, flew into Atlanta at five o'clock in the morning, and then got on the tour bus and drove to Chattanooga and played the other night. It was great. Uh, nice. So we'll be. <laughs> Dude, a lot Chattanooga. of people from Nashville can't showed up too. It was funny. Yeah. And that's, what's funny is when you go to a show in Nashville, like you talk to the crowd, you know, metal crowds that, you know, you get friendly with people and you talk to people, nobody at the shows in Nashville are from Nashville. They're yeah. all driving from everywhere else to come in, you know, like, exactly. Uh, you know, when I went and saw it, that Lorna Shore tour a few months ago, like everybody I met was from like, like Indy or Louisville or, you know, somewhere else that came in because I don't know, there's, you know, not a lot of people that live here that are actually going to shows, which is right. Yeah, because they, they see it all, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys, you guys are living in all those nice houses and stuff. You ain't got to go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, one of my favorite things too, like getting back on the road, because I didn't tour from the time we got sent home until this year, because I wanted to be home and see my kid kind of grow up. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, my first tour back, I've called. I've kind of fallen into this situation now where I'm, I'm basically working for European bands when they come over here. <laughs> Right, we're very and it's cool. It's so interesting. Um, the band I was touring with in February and March, it was their first time in North America ever. Wow. And it was so interesting to see their perspective of the country and how things work and stuff with with you know, just knowing the stereotypes and then actually getting here. Um, that's cool for you to be their liaison. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a blast. It, and mm -hmm. it's and it's super cool because 
you know, the, the band I was teching for back then is like, they're all, they're all German. And it's like, I know a little bit of German, but you know, it was interesting walking into the dressing room and just walking in on a conversation and it's just German going back and forth. And then they're like, yeah. they're like, Oh, sorry. Do you want us to switch to English? I'm like, I, I don't care. You do your thing, dude. <laughs> like, I'm like, whatever. I'm like, it's done striking the Deutsch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, but it's fun. And then like this summer, I told you when we started, like I'll, I'll be tour managing the electric callboy thing. And it's like, you know, they blew up in the last couple of years and yes. now uh, coming over here for the first time to do headliners, like that's going to be wild and festivals here and stuff like that. Like it's, it's fun to get, I I've loved being home for the last couple of years, but it's, it's pretty fun getting back into it. I'm not going to, it's lie. time to get back out there. Yeah. And I want to look at you guys up and see if there's some shows that are closer for all, I'll come see you man with the family. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I know, I know this, this tour I'm doing with them. There's like no Southern or really Midwest dates at all. Um, oh, okay. Like, yeah, we, we go from like, you know, a lot of West Coast, and then all of a sudden there's Guess like- Guess what, man? We, you catch us. We got a spot in Rancho Cucamonga, man. We're all over oh. the Withers Yeah, what's all up? All right, all right. Oh, well, we're going to be out. We're going to be out West. We're going to be up North. We got some Canada we'll stuff. Keep it, yeah, stuff. We'll keep in touch, man. We go yeah. to West, uh, Rancho Cucamonga. My uh, wife's mom has a condo out there that we go and stay to oh, stay cool. at, and it's great. We love it, man. And that way, I, when I was doing a lot of work in LA, it was easy for me to get to Oakland, Sherman Oaks, uh la right there from rancho Cucamon. even though the traffic was terrible oh, I bet. it was it was still a, a very good location and we we still have that spot out there so yeah man well i'll keep in touch with you with that yeah that's sick man um mm -hmm. so you've i know with a new record coming out you've been piled with media and a lot of the times yes. when i have people on here i i you know i know i'm in the middle of their day so I want to get you a little break before you have to go on to your next thing. But before I do, um, I always ask, you know, the artist directly on this. So the new album again, truth killer coming out July 28th, 2023. Uh, if anybody's watching this podcast on YouTube, I'll have links in the description where you can pre-order, you can follow on social What's up, media, <laughs> but, but uh, from you from straight from your mouth right yeah. now for any of the fans or anybody that wants to support the band, what, what, what are, what's the best way whether it's financial or not, what are some of the best ways that fans can help support Seven Dust like right now? <laughs> come see us at come see us at our shows and rock out and support music all around the world, not just for us, but for everyone out there. We love you guys. And hey, seriously, we're blessed to be here, man. And just things like this, uh, getting the word out, getting the message out. And uh, letting people know that we're here and we're no different than anyone else. We still go through the same things that everyone else is going through out there. Problems at home, family, bills. What's next? Am I going to be able to work? Is a tour going to happen? What's going to happen is going to get canceled. Uh, but things that we have to, you know, kind of to, to go around these obstacles that uh, have been put in front of us. And uh, we just look forward to the support. Just come out and see us and, and jam and have a good time. And everyone stay safe and healthy. That's all I need. All right, man. Well, I mean, like for me, like I said, if you guys are in the area, I, I will be there because it's been it's been quite some time since I've seen a Seven Dust show, to be honest. Well, well let's do this, man. Yeah. Let's hang. And uh, we'll keep in touch. I'll get Kev, uh, get your digits and stuff when I get yeah. to Nashville in a month. Let's hang out. Dude, that sounds great, man. Well, dude, thank you so much for giving me some of the time out of your day. I appreciate this a ton. It's and, been a uh, pleasure to do this, man. Yeah, for sure, man. This is a good conversation. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Hopefully, the, the rest of the media stuff isn't too tedious. But uh, I know it can be. But you don't have to say anything. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. You know how it is, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Take hey, care, man. Hey, you see them guys you. in red or anybody, tell them I said what's up. Will do, man. Take care, brother. All right. You too. Tell the wife hello and give that baby a hug. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Thank you so very much one more time to Lejean from 7Dust for joining us. This was a blast, man. Even when I went back and edited this for YouTube and Spotify and everything else, like, you know, it's just wild how you reconnect with somebody that you've known off and on for years or run into. And it's just, you get comfortable really fast. And that's what I felt with this. And he's just such a nice, loving guy, man. So these conversations are fantastic. Just as a reminder to everybody listening, July 28th, 2023, Seven Dust 14th studio album, Truth Killer, is releasing worldwide from Napalm Records. Again, links will be available in the description on YouTube, or you can go to sevendust.com to check out all the information. Also, those tour dates, again, just about a month and a half from when this podcast releases, they're kicking off that other leg with Alter Bridge of the Pawns and Kings tour that starts August 1st. 
And then in October, you can go see the Machine Killer Tour, which is the co-headlining tour of Seven Dust and Static X. Again, I am so unbelievably stoked for that one, man. I'm definitely going to be checking that out. But um, if there's somebody out there listening that has never had the opportunity to see Seven Dust live before, I would highly recommend it. There's a reason that they are so highly regarded in the music industry amongst their peers, man. Go to a Seven Dust show and nine out of 10 times, you will see every single other member of the bands on that festival or tour or whatever side stage watching these guys because they put on a killer show with high energy. And I think everybody that's a fan of rock and metal should experience that at least once. So thank you one more time to Lejean. And if this is your first time on the podcast or it's not, There are ways that you can support this podcast and my content as well. Uh, YouTube.com slash tank. The tech is my main hub for everything. I mean, YouTube is my biggest platform that I do stuff on, but I also stream on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash tank. The tech. We talk about music news. We check out music from time to time. We even play some games and stuff like that. You could also support my content directly by going to patreon.com slash tank. The tech. You get bonuses like seeing these videos and podcast episodes earlier than they actually get posted and a couple other really cool things as well, like access to a private discord channel and stuff like that. But just know that none of that stuff is necessary. It's just a way to help if you're able to or want to. I just appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this. So thank you one more time, wherever you are in the world, be safe. Be kind to each other. I love all of you guys, and I will be back very soon with another episode of the Back Lounge Podcast.